So what what y'all hear the term value engineering at work ever? Um, you've probably done value engineering. They just didn't tell you you were doing value engineering. Uh, so, well, well, we'll get into let's find a definition. So, oh, I thought I put a definition. So, uh, the what the idea is, how do we add value? Because you also hear it called value analysis, value management. But v value engineering, or VE, is what it's called almost almost exclusively. There are some other terms sometimes, but VE is what it's predominantly called. The idea is how do we increase the value of this project, or the product rather. Whatever the project is, how do we increase the value of it? So sometimes that's uh, we make it cheaper, which is a weird way of saying we increase the value, you'd make it cheaper. Right? Uh, but the idea being we still have this asset that's worth a certain amount of money. If we can build it for cheaper, we pay less for it then the kind of that delta that our profit is more, which adds value, maybe not to the product itself, but to the owner's bottom line. So that would increase value. So the idea behind is that how do we increase value? What does it become? How do we save money? So how do we cut stuff out that we, that we like but don't need to save money? Uh, I say that a little bit tongue in cheek. It's not always like that. Usually sophisticated contractors and owners will actually go through a a uh, pretty well-defined VE process. Um, so looking back at the delivery methods, so in design bid build, contractors typically don't get to offer their input during design uh, in that kind of that integrated process we talked about. Um, so understanding the contractor's role in a VE exercise is, is pretty critical because if it's not, you know, even in some CM projects, the subs don't, not all the subs are involved uh, in design. N the reality is nearly all projects go through some form of VE, which is not, VE is not necessarily a bad word. You know, so we should be doing some kind of VE. If we're not going through it, then we're not really approaching design and, and construction management properly. We should be looking at, okay, do we really need this type of finish or do we really need this type of system? Um, is this the best? Is this the most is this the way to add the most value? Uh, we, sh we should be asking ourselves that question. We shouldn't just stick with our first. Whatever we could copy and paste from the last project and put in this one, we shouldn't just stick with that. And most projects are over budget at some point. That's just the reality. Uh, but if it's construction management or even design build, we have that uh, flexibility in bringing the design to fit within budget constraints. So a definition of uh, a VE is a, so a systematic team approach to analyze and evaluate a product to obtain the maximum value and eliminate unnecessary costs, right? Which again, fancy way of saying let's make things cheaper. Right? But at eliminate unnecessarily unnecessary costs is a is an important one. Um, but the ultimate goal is to to increase value, and I think I've got kind of the. Sure. We have to save money across that height of the bench cap. Yeah. Because we're not going to be able to sustain four times. Yeah. And then the next one's going to be 35 bucks. That needs to be 25 bucks. Yeah. We sometimes we call it sharpening your pencil. Yeah. So we're still re engineering with the little with, with the less right. material. Right. Right. Th that's so true. That's a, that's a good point. Yeah. Sometimes it. Bridges, I mean yeah. It's all engineering. Yeah. You can't just wing it. Right. Uh, that's a really good point. If you want to make something more cost effective, you, yeah, you would go back and look at, yeah, do we need to have, does, does the beam need to be this deep? Right. Can we get a Can shallower beam? Yeah. Where we know it's over designed. Yeah. We would love to build everything over yeah. designed. You would too. Sure. It will never fall. It will yeah. never break. Yeah. But no one can afford things that are, rarely can you afford something that's over designed. Right. No, that's a that's a great point. Yeah. So in in a lot of instances, uh, you know, vertical and horizontal, there is engineering involved. Um, the overall exercise is not really an engineering exercise, but when you right. break it apart it's into its constituent, it's right, right. But uh, the the individual parts, yeah, sure, they do involve. Yeah, can we get away with a 
you know, with can we use fly ash? Can we can we use uh, third? Can, yeah. Can we use four thousand pound mud instead of forty five hundred pound mud or whatever? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, that's a great point. Uh, and just real quickly going through the the history of it. This again, I'm revealing my my nerddom, but so the way it started was in it, during World War Two. There's a lot of material shortages, and so this guy named Lawrence Miles was working at General Electric, and they were running out of a lot of the materials that were kind of critical in their in their operations, and so he was forced to find something else. What else can I use? Well, what he found out was, hey, this other stuff works just as just as well, and it's cheaper. So maybe on the next project. Instead of just waiting until, oh, no, I don't have the material I need, maybe I should proactively say, hey, maybe there's another alternative that works just as well and it's cheaper. So it was the result of being forced into, okay, I have to find something else that works. And then it became, hey, we could do this intentionally. We could maybe try to save money instead of waiting for another war to break out. Uh, we'll go through this pretty quickly because... Not worth spending a lot of time on, but um, I think you get the gist. But uh, the, the goal is to add add features without adding costs, or deduct or remove um, features that aren't critical in achieving design intent. So, <laughs> with the hope being, if you remove features, you're removing costs. You're not paying for those features anymore. But if it gets to the point where you're not achieving the designer's original intent, you're you're really changing the essence of a of whatever the project is. Um, so it's not VE anymore. That's just redesign. Uh, and again, back to this first cost and life cycle cost. So what is the cost right now to install it? And what is the life cycle cost? Really important to keep those both on hand. Really, really important. Uh, enhanced value received per dollar spent. So just like everything we do in construction, we want to do it faster, cheaper, and better. So improve schedule, reduce cost, improve quality, and reduce risk. Oh, and safer. I should have said faster, cheaper, better, and safer. Uh, what VE is not, it's a, a way to cheapen the design, so getting away from that design intent. It's not a way of means of reconciliation. So you don't go, oh, I'm over budget. I better do a VE to align my original budget with my current costs. It's not a way of just making yourself look good that you anticipate all the costs. Um, and we'll go through those. Um, when is it used? Typically, well, like I said, all projects go through some form of VE at some point. But when is it kind of actively implemented when a project is over budget? Okay, but really important that it happens whenever possible during the design phase. Okay, like I said before, the CM is all about earlier the better, earlier the better. You hear that all over. Uh, over and over again. Um, it's really easy to make a VE decision during design and implement it pretty cheaply. If you've already started construction, it is possible but not as not as easy. You're not going to save as much money. Uh, sometimes, believe it or not, the budget will allow for additional features and you can... Some VE exercises end in, in an increased cost. Um, it's not the norm, but it's not that uncommon either. So if an owner says, oh, we've saved all this money over here, let's do another VE exercise that's going to make my lobby look nicer or it's, it's going to make the landscape look nicer or whatever, whatever it is. Um, so spend more money to increase the overall, again, add value to the project. Uh, so, again, additional ex uh, VE exercise can happen during construction. Oh, well, it's not really ideal. Um, but the, the same idea behind sustainability, identify the project goals and stay within those goals. So you don't want to just add a bunch of sustainable ideas, materials, um, just because you can. You want it to fit within project goals. Same with value engineering. You don't want to just do VE because you can and because you got time to kill. You want to do something that fits within the goals of the project. Again, back to 
So, and part of the life cycle cost of maintenance impacts. So, y'all subject matter experts would be very knowledgeable about what's it going to take to maintain all these things. You know, if you're doing flat work and you're trying to reduce, I, I can't think of an example off the top of my head, but um, you would know, hey, you change uh, the constituents of the concrete, you change the mix design. Well, this is what's going to happen. It's going to change. It's going to impact your freeze thaw cycle. Uh, you're going to get freeze thaw cracking, and so you would know all those things, right? Because you've probably done repair on it, or had to uh, deal with them before, right? You had to tear it out, right? Torn out somebody else's work and, and fixed it. So, so if you get a, a VE option, you would be able to say uh, that's going to be a problem. So that's going to be. You may be saving money right now, but it's going to be a maintenance problem, right? So that would be uh, something to all again, something to offer offer up to set yourself apart, uh, which is quality, same as quality ex expectations. Um, we'll burn through this pretty quickly, but uh, way to maximize VE is to get do it early with the people that have uh, a really high knowledge of the whatever the it is, uh, whatever you're trying to to change. Yes, yes. So if a, if a sub works with a prime a lot, uh, yeah, they will have input into. They should be getting it. I mean, the it kind of happens naturally. I guess it doesn't doesn't have to be that way, but it it kind of just happens, right? Because uh, right, it ha kind of happens. Like, yeah, if you're, you're doing a project, hey, we're bidding this other job. Let me. Let me ask you about if you did it this way on this last three jobs, what would you do differently or whatever? Um, so, yeah, it does kind of happen organically like that. It's sub providing input to the prime who then in turn either is doing the design or provides input to the designer. Uh, and this uh, you'll hear the idea of co what is the cost of VE? It's all the administrative costs, right? So it's not free. That's why we don't just do it for fun at the end of a project because you got to pay someone to go through the plans and uh, get pricing. And even if you're not paying them by the hour, well they could be doing something else productive for you while they're getting getting paid. So, um, cost alternates and, and deducts. So this is so when you're presenting a VE proposal, you would break it out into ads and deducts. Um, so if the the cost all if the alternate material is higher it's an ad if it's less it's a deduct um, but the the important part of this slide is always in comparison to the base price always compare it back to the base price so if you've got several options don't compare them to each other don't say option b is five hundred dollars more than option a always compare it back to the base because that's how a change any kind of change order to be written as compared to the base. So remember, any kind of VE proposal always, always compared to the base price. Which seems like it would go without saying, but it's you'd be surprised. You'll see people are comparing them to each other, and it gets very convoluted, and it's hard to follow. And, um, if it were just hard to follow, that'd be inconvenient, but sometimes sub uh, change orders are written incorrectly, which is, is problematic. 